get in the know. Non-stop Vikings talk. It's Purple Daily on Score North and scorenorth.com. Her cousins, I know people always come down on him, man, but, you know, I've gained so much respect just watching him. I like him as a player. And I'm predicting this year that the Minnesota Vikings are going to win the NFC. I know the, Dalvin Cook's the not there. The whole NFC? I, yeah, the whole the, NFC. Not just the NFC. Look, who's, who, they're going to win the NFC North. They're going to win the division. They are? The, who's going to win the division? Everyone's on the Lions, Ben Wagon. Nah, I ain't coming. It's still the Lions. At the end of the day, it's still the Lions. I'm sorry. No, they're going to win the NFC North. Wow. Who's that in for Rich Ice and Mike, Mike Hill. Okay, he, it was Mike Hill. Yep, he fills Ooh. in for, for Rich every once in a while. And yeah, he, not just the NFC North. Mike says the whole dang thing. Whole NFC. Wow. So, like, it, it is amazing that the, um, the change in perception of Kirk Cousins that, that quarterback that's, has yeah, caused. That's, that's what happened. No, yeah. I know. Yeah. But it is incredible. And now, look, once the season starts, we'll see. Because um, perceptions are quickly forgotten if they're not followed by uh, success. But it is amazing how different people feel about Kirk now. You know what's funny? I'm not sure about you. I thought that series was really good. Like, Mm -hmm. it was a great insight. It's about as close as you're going to get an inside look to uh, quarterbacks as you possibly can. But to me, more than, like, changing my perception... Other than the fact that I knew he played hurt, I didn't realize how hurt he played. But beyond that, it sort of confirmed what I thought. Like, I've never thought he was a bad person. You know? Right. Like, there are there might be some things that he believes that I don't believe, blah, blah, blah. But, I mean, that's true of the entire world. Um, but I never thought he was, like, a bad guy. I really thought that, like, all of the, especially the football stuff. Because, I mean, I guess I haven't really thought about how he treats his kids and wife, and I'm glad to see that he treats them really, really well. That's nice. But I don't dwell on that because his personal life's not my concern. But was there anything that you saw beyond how beat, he, beat up he was from a football standpoint that surprised you? Because I thought it just confirmed a lot of things, including why Kevin O'Connell was hired. Right. Yeah, It's we all knew that this like pro-Kirk propaganda was probably going to start after this quarterback doc, and rightfully so. He was kind of the media darling of of the whole thing. So. Uh, it, it's cool to see, though. It's it's cool to see that other people are now kind of buying some Viking stock. All right. So uh, Purple Daily today, you're probably saying, where is Phil Mackey? Well, he is, he is out. He was at a wedding this weekend in the Pacific Northwest. Um, he will be back on Tuesday for Tuesday's show. And, yes, football season is here. Training camps have opened. Vikings football. rookies reported on Sunday. <laughs> Veterans, including Kirk, are showing up today. Not surprisingly, uh, the... Vikings social media team has a picture of Kirk right now on Twitter posted in which he is in his uh, dad type getup with some shorts on and like a plaid shirt. Of course. Um, and practice will start on Wednesday. Uh, first time fans are going to be allowed into TCO is on Saturday. But with all of that in mind, Declan Goff has come prepared with five reasons for optimism. I do. I have five reasons. You tasked me with this. Mm-hmm. I said, no problem. I can bring five things to the table. Uh, of reasons to be optimistic going into the 2023 season. I'm very excited for, uh, to bring you this list, Judd. Very excited. Uh, I have one through five, and I, I, won't, I won't say that like one being is the most important and five being like the least important. These are just five. So th- I'm just going to go from yeah, one fair. down to five. Five reasons I think that are, uh, are, are to be positive about the Vikings going in to 2023. Uh, let's just start with number one with a bullet here. Uh, reason number one is the Vikings offense is as deep as it's been in 10 plus years. Uh, I really think it's as honed and it has as deep as it's ever been since probably 2009. You could make the case that in 2018, when Kirk's first year here, hey, that offense was still pretty good, right? You had Stefan Diggs and Thielen in their prime. You had a healthy Dalvin Cook. Uh, But I think what pushes it over the top are two very important things. Number one, you have two legitimate tackles, Christian Derrissaw, Brian O'Neill. Now, Brian O'Neill, I believe, was drafted in 2018, eventually made the start, became a starter as a rookie about like a few games into the season. Yep. But with Derrissaw and O'Neal, that's part one. Mm-hmm. Part two, you have a head coach that embraces offense. So you you basically take a very similar talented pool of from that 2018 offense. You put it in 2023 with similar pieces, yep. but with a better offensive line yep. and a head coach who embraces this game. And that, in my opinion, makes you feel as good as you've ever felt. I think about the Vikings offense. Yeah, since probably when Brett Favre was here in 2009. Yeah, and and even then, Favre was sort of the fixer 
Because, you know, Brad was, Brad didn't call plays. He tried in 2006. It didn't go well. But I don't know that there was ever a ton of trust in Brad or the offense. And, I mean, Brett was just another. I mean, his 2009 was incredible. And he also knew the West Coast uh, backwards and forward. But I agree with you. Like, when's the last time? I would say it was probably Denny at some point in time when you felt this good about the offense and the guy that coached it. And I I don't mean the coordinator because we have had some pretty good coordinators here. I mean the head coach. So, yes, that is definitely a very good reason for optimism, and I will continue to say this. I don't expect the Vikings to win 13 games, but I think the team could look better and have fewer wins. So, like, my, I'm not saying they're going to win 13 or 14 again, but I am saying, Dex, starting with what you just po- pointed out, I could see it be, um, being a more aesthetically pleasing team. Yeah. But the schedule will be tougher. You don't win 13 games on a yearly basis. So, yeah, I think that absolutely nails it. Starting with O'Connell and, you know, Kirk as well and Justin Jefferson, there is definite reason to think that the offense will take a consistency step, especially in 2023. Yeah, and I probably buried some of the lead there, but, you know, Jefferson, Hawkinson, you have a running back by committee approach. You have uh, Jordan Addison, who will hopefully make a big difference here. K.J. Osborne might take the next step. Uh, as well. So yeah, just I think from top to bottom, it's as good as I've felt about a Vikings offense in a very long time. I'm hesitant to say in my lifetime, but it's up there. Well, when when did you start to follow follow the Vikings? Because that's like the beginning of your fandom is not your lifetime. That's true. When did you start to follow them? What season? Two thousand. Yeah, no, you're probably right then because two thousand they you know they made the N- NFC Championship game, but the height of that offense turned out to be obviously. 98. Um, and but, I know, you know, like 03 and 04, it was good. It was pretty good. Yeah, it wasn't. Yeah, but I mean, it wasn't yes. as deep. Yeah, it wasn't as deep. And, and again, I trust O'Connell more than I trusted Childress mm-hmm. or Tice. Mm-hmm. Like Denny, when Denny was at the height of his game, underrated, really good, I think, offensive coach. But yeah, for the majority of your time watching the Vikings, I, I don't think they've ever had a head coach uh, offensively who I've trusted as much as I trust what O'Connell is going to bring. And as we saw in the documentary, too, what O'Connell brings for Kirk. That relationship is huge for both. Let me dovetail at number two, then. All right. Because the second one, I think, goes perfectly. Kevin O'Connell is the most likable head coach in my lifetime as a Vikings fan. I will say that. I know we just talked about lifetime, but he is the most likable head coach. He's You can embrace him. He embraces offense. We saw it in the quarterback documentary as well. Uh, Look, I I liked Mike Zimmer. Things got a little weird at the end there. Uh, Les Frazier was a great guy and very likable human being as well, but you still kind of felt like, oh, this guy probably doesn't have the full chops to be an NFL head coach. Brad Childress was, I mean, what was likable about Brad? I don't think there was anything likable really about Brad Childress. And as much as Mike Tice, again, was was this good, kind of courageous, goofier-looking guy, um, I don't really think uh, he was as likable as Kevin O'Connell is, and we saw that now in quarterback. So it's just nice to have a head coach who embraces things and his optimism is high. And yes, I am sure behind the scenes, the guy can ream some heads, and he is an NFL football coach. Yeah, he's got, he's got a side that probably we don't have ever we have never seen. It would yep. make me cry myself to sleep every night mm. uh, in fear of him yelling at me because I'm a millennial and I don't like being yelled well, and at. Your gal loves him, so that's yeah. yeah my gal thing. also loves him. She might have helped me with this second one too. But I think Kevin O'Connell is the most likable head coach in my lifetime. So I think yeah, I, I think that what you said's right though. He's the most likable, probably potentially successful one. Because, I mean, Les Frazier will not be beat. He is the nicest man He's I've ever nice covered. Yeah. He is the nicest man I've ever, ever covered. He is a great guy. Um, but O'Connell, yeah. I mean, Leslie was... Leslie milked the most that he possibly could from that 2010 debacle. Got the job because of that. But you didn't have this illusion, d- despite the playoff appearance they made against the Packers, uh, with Joe Webb at quarterback. I don't think you had an, the illusion that he was going to stick around long. And so, yes, I think that this is this is probably a guy, unless things change, and he doesn't see personality wise. I don't think he's going to change that much. Um, I would agree. He's like the he's like a guy that you could see being here long term, and actually being well liked long term. Which is where Denny, you know, Denny when he got here and placed Burnsy, 
And he started in, I think it was his introductory press conference with, there's a new sheriff in town. Yeah. We <laughs> ate that up, dude. People forget the first couple years of Green, we loved him. And then and then some of the, the Star Tribune broke the story about his uh, past stuff at Stanford. Um, and that sort of changed things. And he did the now infamous uh, bunker video at Winter Park. And like fans turned then. But, yeah, I think you're on the right track with saying combining potential success with being likable. And it's one year in, but I get your point. Yeah, I just, there's just a breath of fresh air about him, you know, which I think is very important. Yep. And with Zim, I, I love Zim. I, lo- I really did, especially those early years. I, I love that they had a defense that was awesome, and he was your classic, you know, grunty, old, grizzled football coach. Football. But. I just think there's a different vibe with Kevin O'Connell, and it's it makes you excited to be a Vikings fan for the first time in a while. The the only concern, and you're right about this though, was you know Green two three years people loved him. Zim, you know if that's our Zimmer, that's yeah. our feisty coach. So things can change quickly. But O'Connell seems to me the thing I like about him is he seems to me to be pretty even keel. And the other thing that I love about him is he's wired like a successful NFL quarterback. That was my. That's my biggest takeaway from the quarterback documentary. Kevin O'Connell, if he had had a smidge of talent, right, like to play, that you want that guy as your quarterback. Absolutely. Like the the unrelenting positivity, which in real life I call BS on. I hate that stuff. But but in sports, it is huge. You have to believe that at any point in time, you can either win a game like the Colts game. Or like the Dallas game, pivot off of it and you're done with it. And you're not going to harp on it, nothing. Uh, but before we get to uh, the positivity talking point, and yes, this is Purple Daily. This is Judd and Declan, and we are doing five areas of positivity. You have not happened upon the wrong show. It's just the training camp has started, and we're all excited. Point number three is going to be brought to you by our friends at Finch Home Solutions, my friend Cody and his team. I'm going to tell you right now, if there's any electrical work that you need done in your home, Finch Home Solutions is going to show up in that van. Please sound the gala horn because that van always makes me think. In fact, that should be their horn. When, just the uh, just the gala horn. Just one. just the gala horn. When they arrive, Finch Home Solutions. That should come from the van. It would be absolutely <laughs> perfect. But big or small, if you need anything from a light replaced to an outlet to your home, say it's an old home, needs to be rewired. Electro- electrically completely. Guess what? Finch Home Solutions can do that all. They're fast. They're courteous. They're thoughtful. They're great. They are very good at what they do. In fact, Sports Dad allowed them in his home. And you know, if I allowed them in my home, it's safe for you to do the same because they're going to get the job done. 612 357 2604 or finchhomesolutions.com. Just fill out a form. They will come out and take care of whatever you need fixed. Again, FinchHomeSolutions.com if you need anything done from an electrical point of view. Oh, by the way, our friends at 3Jack and 3Jack.com in the North Loop, one of the best places to get some swings in. In fact, uh, for $100 a month, you can get one hour of free sim play during the off-peak hours from Tuesday through Friday at 11 a.m. to 4 p.m. And a limited guest. So you book the bay. You bring your buddies. Those tee time sheets fill out in, in real life on the golf course too many times, right? I'm already looking at tee times, and I can't get one in. How am I, the heck am I going to do that? Well, I'll go to 3Jack instead. Let's go to 3Jack.com to book that bay, and, of course, enjoy a nice cold one on the patio. Yeah. Great beer selection, great appetizers. It's a favorite of Mackie and Judd and Declan's as well. Go to 3Jack and 3Jack.com. Two words mm-hmm. this week. Air conditioning. <laughs> Air Work on that game. Yes, Air conditioning. That's a good point. Go to go go sit in the cool and get some swings in and get your nachos in at uh from our friends at Three Jack. All right, Judd, number three. Yes, sir. I'm gonna go to the other side of the ball now. I've uh, given you a couple nice. offensive things. Let's give you a couple defensive things. Nice. Uh, this might be the hottest one, I think. Marcus Davenport will be just as good, if not better, than Zadarius Smith. Ooh, so I think, that's a hot take. I think there's a lot of uh, oh man, are they gonna be able to replace that? Zadarius was really good. He got hurt, but then was still really effective. But still, clear wasn't the same player he was in the first eight games of the season. They bring in Marcus Davenport and basically are going to use him in a very similar role. Now, Marcus Davenport uh, didn't have you had a half a sack, but still had a bunch of pressures last year for the Saints. Um, he had nine sacks for the Saints in 2021, 21 and a half of it in his career. Also, mostly being a part-time player. Last year, 
only played in 50% of the defensive snaps. Uh, the year before that, 64% pass rush of the defensive snaps. Yep. He's going to be a pass Lance rush Johnstone. specialist. And I think he'll be just as good. And look, God willing, we'll, we'll get to a little Daniil Hunter nugget, I believe, at the end of this episode. But Marcus Davenport, Daniil Hunter, I like that combination. You need as many people to rush the passer as possible. And then you give him Brian Flores, a guy who can really scheme up ways to rush the quarterback. So don't be concerned about Zadarius Smith being gone. In fact, I think Marcus Davenport will be just as good, if not better, than Zadarius Smith. Yeah, I didn't watch a lot of Saints games in 2022, but his his stats didn't make sense. What, half a sack, but a ton of pressures? And the the thing to, to keep in mind is, and this goes back to something Zimmer correctly harped on, but you want to get pressure. It helps the cornerbacks. It obviously helps the uh, entire pass defense. And if you get sacks, that's awesome. But sacks aren't necessarily the goal. Like you want to, so if Marcus Davenport can apply a ton of pressure, and let's say he gets up to five sacks, that's the most important thing. The other important thing, and this can be difficult, but it's what uh, Zadari Smith didn't have going for him and has not for a few years, is maintaining health enough to continue that pressure. Because if you recall, Dex, Zadaria Smith's first half of last season was unbelievable. Yep. And then he banged up the knee against Buffalo and was never the same. And so I I would just say this, though, to back up your point. The Davenport thing to me is the pressures. Is he in the backfield? If he gets to the quarterback, that's great. But if he doesn't consistently get sacks, but he consistently applies pressure, that's the most important thing and I think because sacks are such a sexy statistic, we lose sight of that sometimes. But um, if you're right, that is a huge thing. Because for Brian Flores, he's going to bring a ton of pressure. For Brian Flores, if he can get Davenport on track, and let's say he does get five sacks or something like that, that could be a pretty a pretty savvy free agent signing of a guy coming off what was definitely perceived as a down year. Absolutely. I'm going to stick on the defensive side of the ball, too. And this one might even be a little surprising because... Um... Because it's hard to be optimistic about a position group that's very unproven. But I'm going to tell you why you should be. So the fourth thing on my list is allow your rookies and second your defensive backs to make mistakes. Mm. Allow them to make mistakes. Preaching embrace patience. embrace this a little bit, okay? So between Andrew Booth, Caleb Evans, I'll throw Lewis Seen in there, Makai Blackman, Jay Ward... There's been a bunch of defensive backs or safeties basically drafted by Kwesi in this regime over the last two drafts. Now you're hoping, you're hoping of those even, what, five guys I just listed, can two of them turn into serviceable cornerbacks? Obviously, it'd be great if all of them turned in yes. to very serviceable defensive backs. But the law of averages suggests that most likely only one or two of these will be a very good NFL starters. Allow these guys to grow. Allow these guys to make some mistakes here and there. Trust that Brian Flores, who has been a very established defensive coordinator, can get his teeth into these guys, make them uh, make them be very good football players. And even though it's a little scary because you're playing a first place schedule and the first five games of this season are tough. You will see Patrick Mahomes. You will see Justin Herbert. You will see Jalen Hurts. You could be two and three pretty damn quick mm -hmm. in the 2023 season. But I think you have to let these rookies and second year defensive backs make mistakes. And actually, I think that is a room for optimism. Let them figure out the mistakes because then you're going to figure out and, and weed them out of which ones are legitimate defensive backs for you in 2023. Well, and it is, uh, it, it's intriguing too, because the only guy that you're definitely set on, and I think he's going to start outside in the base and move inside, is By Byron Murphy Jr., who they acquired as a free agent from the Cardinals. But after that, there's some interesting names here. Um, Andrew Booth Jr. has battled injury problems since college, and last season as a rookie was no different. He had injury problems. Um, I don't actually think, now he struggled at times, but he was a rookie. But I think the biggest concern there, injuries. Watching the uh, off-season workouts that were open to the media, it looks to me like a Caleb Evans is going to is going to be given every opportunity, probably atop this list, to win a starting job outside. But he had three concussions. So again, I don't think it's a concern about can he play. I think they think he can play. Mm -hmm. I think the concern is three concussions, and it sounds like he's going to wear some type of different helmet with more protection. Mm -hmm. But, it, you know, three concussions is a lot, especially in one season. But if he can hold up and he can play, I think he wins a starting job. Here's the here's the X factor guy. 
Let me next and time. we talked about this a little bit after, I think, the uh, OTAs or minicamp. Makai Blackman. Yeah. All right? So he is the only one of the three, Evans, Booth, Blackman, that was drafted with Flores in the draft room. It looked to me like he was getting legitimate chances again in the off-season camps. Hmm. So here's what I'm wondering. Hmm. Despite the fact that, if I'm not mistaken, Booth was a second-round pick in 2022, I'm wondering if your week one, three main corners, because the nickels basically started out because of the passing, would be Byron Murphy Jr. inside, Evans, and Blackman. Yeah. But yeah, I mean... Can see it. To your point, for as much concern as there is about the cornerback spot, you know what? It took Xavier Rhodes some time. Yes, it did. And Mike turned him into, uh, or played a huge role in turning him into a, at the time, perennial Pro Bowl guy. So yeah, the whole thing of, well, you should trade for an old guy. We've seen that before. No. I'm with you on that. And look, go back to those Zimmer defenses. Look, you saw Xavier Rhodes get drafted. You saw Trey Waynes get drafted. You saw those cornerbacks take a little bit of time, but it worked out for them, right? I mean, Mackenzie Alexander in the first go around, solid cornerback, right? Like, they invested a lot of pieces into that position, and I know Vikings fans are sick of the Vikings always drafting it, but you need solid guys there. It's a pass-happy league. You can't have complete sins there. Guys. You got to keep developing well, you, you and churning develop. you and develop. move guys in and out. So, yes. Bashad Breland is not an answer. Oh, Bashad like, that's the, but, but that's like the, and not to compare these guys because in their primes, this guy was superior. But, you know, going back to the Monday Night Miracle in Green Bay, Chris Dishman. Like, the Vikings have brought in more old cornerbacks and quarterbacks, right? Yeah. And being like, okay, we'll just plug and play this guy. And we're all like, oh, okay, cool, because we know his name. Um... And to your point about Waynes, too, because I, I sense it. I sense it right now. People rolling their eyes. And what does Declan know? Trey Waynes was. Trey Waynes, first of all, was a solid player. Yeah, he's a solid player. Hell of a tackler. And he paid the price for the fact that Xavier Rhodes was so good. Because Rhodes was so good and a shutdown guy, of, of which the Vikings, in their history, have not exactly had a plethora of shutdown cornerbacks, Declan. Trey Waynes was like, oh, he's not as good. Well, no, he wasn't as good, but he was a solid player who they developed. Um, point five, your positivity point five will be sponsored by my friends at Livia Weight Control Centers. I'm going to tell you right now. Look at the guy on the left. Look at the guy on the right. How did he get there? How did Sports Dad do it? He did it through uh, the work of his friends who not only helped him drop the weight, but also maintain weight loss. And the good news as we sit here now in summer is that Livia Days have arrived. The best deal of the summer. Join today. You're going to get 50% off your personalized program. Do not wait. You're going to get 50% off your personalized program. I and a lot of people who uh, who consume Score North can tell you because we've gotten notes. We've gotten several notes about how this program works. Lose up to 10 pounds or more in your first two weeks, so you're going to get off to a great start. Voted Minnesota's best weight loss program year after year. There's a lot of options out there, but Livia, I'm going to tell you right now, is the best. 855-GO-L-I-V-E-A, Livia.com. Livia.com, they are going to help you get on a path to, well, first of all, feeling great, looking great, clothes fitting, and a path to better health, Livia.com. By the way, a uh, shout-out to our friends at TCL2 and TCL Televisions. You can get yourself a nice TCL TV with football season coming back. So go uh, check them out. They're presenting sponsor of uh, of us here at Purple Daily. Great TVs. In fact, I'm in the market for getting a new one for the other guest bedroom right now. The other one made the move, Judd. Turned on the TV after not turning it on for two months. Crapped out? Crapped out. There was a big puncture. You know there, what the nice thing is? Puncture TCL's it. got deals. Good deals. Yep. Nice TVs. Yep. Very excited to uh, go get a new one for that guest room. Go get it yourself a TCL TV, too. All right. The fifth and final thing for me here, Judd. Yes. The fifth and final thing. Yes. I've given you two offensive things. I've given you two defensive things. I'm going to give you now a front office thing. The oh, fifth one will be let Quasi cook. Let Quasi Adolfo Mensa cook. Now, you could be saying, well, Declan, the offseason's over, basically. The draft right. already How's happened. What, are you, what do you mean, yeah, let Quasi cook? It's time for KOC cook? to cook. No, no, no. You let Kwesi cook. Because we're going to see some training camp start here. We're going to see these bodies fill in. You're going to see maybe potential cuts. You're going to see trades that could be made. And you need to let Kwesi Adopa Mensa cook here. Is there another missing ingredient like you did last season when you sprinkled in TJ Hawkinson at the NFL trade deadline Ooh. right here? So I, I think you have to also let Kwesi cook. We have a little bit. I think Kwesi's, not reputation, opinion has changed pretty quickly in his only, what, two summers now as the Vikings general manager. 
mostly because of the potential first round busts that are in play for the Vikings, and rightfully so. The first draft class hasn't looked great. We'll still have to wait and see on this draft class. But let Kwesi cook too, because the Hawkinson move was a savvy one. And with training camp also happening and you evaluating your roster with those pads on, right? You got the football pads on. You got the football. sunscreen on. Judge's going to be sweating week from Monday. Off. Week from Monday, we're going to be uh, pads on. So let Kwesi Adolfa Mensa cook here. If there's a missing ingredient into this uh, into this pie, let him let him let him cook it up. I'm glad you brought that that up because I can direct folks to a piece that was oh. posted on Vikings Wire just yesterday by yours truly. We're in fact the writing home of sports dad, VikingsWire.com. But I wrote about the fact that the 2023 draft, while very important, okay, not trying to put that draft down. This is really the key year for last year's draft. Because you're right, a lot of people decided, ah, Quasi screwed that draft up, it's no good. And look, I, I was, I said at the time, I wouldn't trade back from 12 to 32 to take a safety. So I didn't agree with the scene pick. But all of that being said, I, if I'm not mistaken, they made like eight picks in that draft. Eight to ten picks. Anyway, there's a lot of guys that didn't really get a chance who could become important players, you know, again, to go back to Andrew Booth Jr. A Caleb Evans, both battled injuries last year. But if they can win starting jobs, guess what? That draft looks entirely different. And one year, you can. The, it hurts when your first round pick contributes nothing, but the rest of the draft is judged over time. It's not judged, right? Mm-hmm. So I think we were sort of quick to slam that draft class. And look, in three years, if it has not worked out, then it's a problem. But this to me, especially internally, is where you start to now judge the 2022 class and where there could be a very monumental shift in the thought process of how Quazy did if guys start to play. Heck, you know what, Declan? If a receiver goes down, don't sleep on Jalen Naylor, who was a sixth-round pick. Mm -hmm. I really liked him. Mm -hmm. So, like, there are a lot of opportunities now for guys. Ed Ingram could take a huge step. Hopefully he does that by the end of this season, we could have an entirely different view of how Kwesi did in that draft class. Exactly. And yeah, and if there's a, if there's something that has to be added, whether it's a guard, you know, or whether we've seen unfortunate injuries happening in training camp, because obviously the, the biggest one being the Teddy Bridgewater injury where then Spielman had to sh- trade for Sam Bradford. But we've seen late-minute ads here. Like Jalen Rager, I wouldn't classify as like a sexy great ad, but that was a savvy one towards the end of training camp in the season last year too. So... Just let him be able to cook here. Let him figure out ways to add a couple missing ingredients to that roster. He'll be cooking. He'll be cooking. Seasoning. Yeah. All right. um, Great job, Declan, on that. We're going to get to uh, some Daniil Hunter speculation slash news here. But before we do that, Declan, why don't you tell us about an opportunity to go watch some great golf this weekend? It starts this weekend at the 3M Open here. In Blaine, Minnesota, I was just in that neck of the woods on Saturday. I saw the signs lit up saying, welcome golfers, welcome golf fans. Uh, the 3M Open coming back. Justin Thomas, one of the hottest names in golf, he'll be there. Tony Finau will be defending his title last year, or uh, last uh, winner on full swing. We got to see Finau win that championship and see him behind the scenes of his family being here in Blaine. It was a pretty cool thing. Uh, and, of course, hole 18, which is, yeah, trying to become one of the coolest holes in golf. In fact, actually, it is. It is one of the coolest holes in golf. A lot of p- players like to go for it just like we do, and then they dunk the ball in the water. And, well, there's five bucks in the water with another uh, Pro V1 in there. So go to 3mopen.com slash tickets to watch the some of the best professional golfers on the planet. And also make them uh, look like you as well when they, when they drop some balls in the water. Completely okay with that. Go to 3mopen.com slash tickets for this weekend's tournament of golf. So Daniil Hunter. It's been oddly quiet there, okay? Mm -hmm. So he didn't show up. uh, He didn't show up for the OTAs, which he can't be fined for. So if you don't show up, it's certainly notable, but it's not not like you're forfeiting money at that point. He then didn't show up for the two-day mini camp. That is mandatory, and he was fined for each of those two days. And just to be clear, the CBA now mandates fines, and and, and a team can't take those back. You're fined for that. But now we got the next step. Going into the last year of his contract, last season, I should say, Daniil Hunter, is he going to show up for training camp um, as players report on Tuesday? Now, Kirk came in today, but the rookies came in for the most part, or they were, um, they had to report on Sunday. The veterans have to report tomorrow on Tuesday. And at some point in time, Tomorrow, I'm going to be out at TCO because Quasi Adolfo Mensa and Kevin O'Connell are going to have press conferences. Oh, yeah. And that will include questions about Hunter. 
Now, here's the interesting thing. If Daniil Hunter does not show up, an old school holdout, he's on the hook for a fine of $50,000 per day. It's not cheap, and it adds up very quickly. And keep in mind, he wants a new contract. Um, Charlie Walters, and I think Doogie had the exact same thing he told us, if I'm not mistaken, last week, but in Shooter's column as well, in Sunday's Pioneer Press, um, both Darren and Charlie are saying it's highly doubtful that Hunter shows up because he is unhappy. And what they also said, and this is where they're in lockstep, is the Vikings are willing to go up to, I because I, I think the base salary, if I'm not mistaken, for Daniil is five plus million dollars because they've also paid out more. He he wanted more up front a couple of years ago. They said fine, thus reducing his 2023 salary. So I think what Shooter reported was that the Vikings would be willing to go up to like 15 or 16 million dollars for 2023. The problem is Daniil wants a multi-year contract mm. and he wants a competitive one. And the Vikings, because of the fact that Daniil missed all of what was it, 2020, if I'm not mistaken, because of a disc problem in his neck and then uh, suffered an injury halfway through 2021 that knocked him out for the rest of that season against Dallas. Daniil wants a multi-year contract, and the Vikings are like, hold on a second here. We don't really trust your health. You're getting towards 30. Now, here's where I'm expecting a report at some point in time, Dex, but I think this is where the story gets interesting. What some guys have done, and Chris Jones of Kansas City and a few guys are staging holdouts, so they're paying the fine. But what some guys have done now is what they call hold-ins. The new CBA failed to address this, and it's actually somewhat brilliant. But if you show up and say, I can't practice, I got a sore knee, I got this wrong, I got that, that wrong, it sounds like the team can't mandate you to practice. But the team also then can't find you, hence a hold-in. So hold you're in. there, you're going to meetings, you're doing all of your duties except for the fact that you're not practicing to show how upset or disgruntled you are. But Tuesday, and especially Wednesday, when the Vikings take the field at TCO, should be very interesting. Because I think if they're close on a contract, like if they can make headway or have in recent days, I think he shows up and if he hasn't signed it, holds in. If they're not close, my question is, does he show up at all? And mm -hmm. I'm not sure that the answer is yes. But this is like one of the big brewing stories here because as we've talked about, and we have basically discussed this contract situation for Daniil for months now, Dex, what we've talked about is this one. He's one player who, if he's not there, it's a big deal. Yep. Yeah, it's, that's to be a, a, a big problem. And I don't think they're going to want to obviously yeah, fine him the significant amount of money. That makes things a little more difficult. But they have to. to. And yeah, I know that's the, that's that, the point. They got though. no choice. Yeah. So they'll, they'll have to, that, that makes just the relationship extra sour. Um, they got to figure out a way to make this work here at this point. Um, you could trade him for sure, but I don't, I think you kind of missed your window to maximize the most for him. Uh, and you need him on this defense. Like Brian Flores probably doesn't sign up for the, be the Vikings defensive coordinator. If Daniel Hunter's not here either. Uh, so you have to figure out a way to make him happy. Again, in a perfect world, I would just give him, you know, a solid two to three year extension with a ton of money in those first two years, which it sounds like they're open to doing. And Daniel's camp says, no, 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 we want more. Yes. Which I, they want I, more guaranteed money. I get it. I get it. You want a bag. You are a professional athlete. You're the most important player on the defense. I understand the leverage piece you have here, but the Vikings hands are a bit tied as well. So absolutely. I would love it if it's just, yeah, that front loaded three year deal with a bunch of money in the first two years. But this defense is already kind of a work in progress, even with a better scheme fit with Brian Flores running things. That being said, they need Daniil Hunter. They absolutely need him for the 2023 season. What the Hunter camp has to come to grips with is they took a terrible second contract. And it's not the Vikings' fault. Mm -hmm. Like, you took that contract. You were, that was silly. That second contract, you should have broken the bank or gotten traded then. Um, and they now, I feel like, want to be paid off of that to a certain point. Well, that ship has sailed. And so I got to think you can come to an agreement on a sensible three-year contract. But if they're going after guarantees for three more years, it's probably a problem. And here, So here's the curveball. Here's the wrinkle that I find to be the most intriguing, though. Because I don't think this is just a Daniil Hunter conversation, Declan. Okay. I think where this gets to be incredibly intriguing is this. It's a salary cap league. Yep. 
And you right now are working on a contract that in a couple of years is going to kick in and break the bank, Justin Jefferson. Yeah. But what you're hoping to do is probably push some of the cap hits into the next couple of years to then help with the future. Because if you just start to take the cap hits e- immediately in two years, that's an absolute boatload potentially at some point in time. If you spread them out, because the two years of his rookie contract that are left will be enforced. So it's not like that contract gets torn up. But what you can then do is put some of the cap hits for the future contract into this year's and next year's salary cap. Yep. The other one, and I don't think this is going to break the bank, but it's going to be significant, TJ Hawkinson. And that needs to get done. I don't think you're going to fran- I don't think you want to franchise him. Like, I don't think that you want to, I think you got to be able to come to an agreement. Tight ends don't break the bank, uh-uh. but they're, and, and you know what, by the way, just quickly running backs. If you think you got a problem, look at the tight ends for years now, <laughs> pass catching tight ends have gotten screwed at every turn and they've tried to be declared wide receivers and they were laughed at. So you running backs, if you think, oh, we're going to get a special salary scale. No, you're not quit playing that position and move. Um, and then and then the last one that's so interesting about this, and it probably is not being talked about enough, though, is the future quarterback. So if you're sure Kirk Cousins is gone and you're going to draft a guy or something or get a cheaper quarterback, I think you can afford to probably do Daniil yesterday. But you don't know that. Mm-mm. And while I think the Vikings want the freedom to move on from Kirk, I also think there's a chance Kirk stays here. And if Kirk stays here... That's not going to be a salary cap hit that's nothing. So the point is, Hunter's fighting a fight here that's a pretty difficult one because he is an aging player who I think is still very good, but but the clock is ticking. And then you've got at least three other components that are going to eat up cap space. And in the defense of the Vikings and their cap guy, Rob Brzezinski, who does a fantastic job, you know, we've seen what happens when you get irresponsible. And it bites you in the ass. Yep. So I think that there's a lot at work here that the Vikings are probably trying to get to get around. But I agree with your point, which is Brian Flores is probably saying, I don't care how you do it. Just get it done. Get it done with Daniel Hunter. Get it done, yeah. And hopefully they do. Because, yeah, they they need him. And they don't want this to be lingering anymore either because it's going to be well, going to get and stale. And then if he's not there. Yeah. It's going to get old, too. Like, you know, they're going to be asking about it. And, you know, whether it's when it's Flores' turn at the podium or if Kwesi's speaking at the podium or obviously KOC. KOC you know, be, it's it's, it's going to get old. KOC so will take the brunt of it. The PR move of it, of just getting this done, hopefully, like, I don't want this lingering into next week. Like, I know I know the rookies are reporting now. The veterans are going to be here. And then next week's when really things are really a full go and the pads are on, right? And we're, we're playing Monday. Some, we're week playing from football. Monday, we're putting pads on. But... Don't want this to be lingering into August. Like, get this done by the end of the month at the very least. That's kind of where I'm at with the deadline. All right, fantastic stuff on five positives. That's right. Five. Score North. Score North. Purple Daily. Five positives. So all of you out there who think that we hate the Vikings, that we want them, no. We want them to win a Super Bowl, and we just gave you, Declan gave you five very good reasons why you can be positive. And now Declan is going to tell you what you need to know before we go bye-bye. Hit the subscribe button on the Purple Daily YouTube channel for Daily Vikings Entertainment. You can like this video and subscribe for daily alerts. we got Purple Daily on draft also later this afternoon with Thor and Tyler. We're going to take a look at uh, kind of under-the-radar players that could make some noise at training camp and then, I, in uh, theory, Vikingswire.com make did some that noise too. At, uh, at the season as well. So I'll do, be getting after that around 3 o'clock, so be on the lookout for that. Fill back tomorrow on both Purple Daily and Minnesota Sports with Mackie and Judd. We'll see you then.